Marketing research, do not think it is a domain of rich, financially rich companies. My marketing research you need because you need to make some decisions about your business and you cannot make decisions based upon your, your understanding of market, but you have to understand how consumer look at you. So you need, you need lot of information on daily, weekly, monthly basis. Do not just sit in a shell and make decision about your business. Market research is nothing, you know, but it is identification, collection, analysis, dissemination and use of information. Now, how you do, how much you invest is different thing, but you have need to follow certain process and collect some information beyond what you already know and use that information to make better decisions. Ultimately, you make, make the same decision, but this research input will help you in making slight better decisions. There are secondary sources to understand the reports, publications, periodicals, books from where you can get some information, some data, some understanding of the market or you can do some primary research. Difficult to hire, purchase market research reports from agencies because they are very costly. My advice to you is some use some basic research tools that I will discuss. This is a process of research. You have to define the problem and research objectives clearly develop a research plan, collect the information, analyze and make a decision, process, step by step process. Need not hire any agency for this and not much of investment. You have a fever, so what is the problem? Is it a problem or a symptom? It is a symptom. What can be the problem? You have to do some research actually. You have to do some research, you have to wait whether there is some congestion in throat, some throat infection or problem in your stomach, some stomach infection. Can you only treat for fever always? No. You have to go to the cause of fever and do some research. So that is market research actually. Do not be overwhelmed by the symptoms only. Search for the cause. Sometimes sales is not happening, this is a symptom, cause is, cause lies somewhere else. So, you do not, then you can, you have no excuse that we are lost in operational issues, no sorry. Just see the research approaches. For a small business I am going to discuss, I am not going to discuss any other big research. For small business, observational research is good, just go and observe how customers are behaving in actual purchase situation, if you are able to. If you are a marketer of a consumer product or manufacturer of a consumer product or industrial product, just see how others are doing, observe, make notes, how customer is behaving, how supplier is behaving, how other he is behaving, how she is behaving, that gives you some information. Focus group discussion, if you do not know, do not understand the purchase behavior of a group of customers. Why not arrange a focus group, group discussion, if possible, if possible, call 5-6 customer in your premise, premises for a cup of tea and then discuss the issues, how much money you need, discuss the issues which are relevant for your business, purchase behavior, competitions products, why he prefers this product over others. Conduct a focus group discussion. You will get many inputs from that discussion. 
if you are it is more relevant for a consumer products even in industrial products you can call few few buyers in your premises in some get together type of thing some small investment throw some points and then see the reactions these inputs will be very important for your business you will consciously subconsciously they will tell many things and this is one of the most powerful tools which is being used for research the focus group fgd we call focus group discussion very powerful tool to understand consumers better understand business better understand processes understand what should be the new product like what should be the new service where you can add this is a very important tool focus group discussion if you are not able to do that you can do interviewing you can interview your customers interview means you should be so when i say systematic research it means you interview with a pre decided template focus group also you should be prepared it should be systematic with a pre defined template what you need to understand and how just think what i need to understand and how there should be template of questions and then ask why many things will be apparent to you why can't you do it for a group of ladies in your what stops you what is the cost of that tell me you know nothing why do you see, just see if you get some response in a single focus group discussion conduct few more in different localities what is the cost of that very little actually you should be skillful enough to extract from those what you want just make a template and ask questions why 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 you want to understand purchase behavior start asking what you purchase why you behave when you use be comfortable now in this uh, there are some certain guides to guide you on how to conduct a focus group some simple tools and these are available in simple books like a book on marketing research which might cost you 300 rupees only and which is highly valuable actually this marketing book is it's again 300 350 rupees buy it and it gives you very good tips actually the billions of dollar of uh, this market research agency is banking on these tools actually so why can't you use up to your advantage can you name a book marketing is research see one is simple marketing book by kotler kotler keller or kotler keller khoshe jha in indian edition that is one you can purchase the marketing research book by narvesh malhotra so you can just read that you know just if not that just read the chapters which are more relevant so focus group discussion how to conduct what should be the criteria how do you, see once you conduct one you might get uh, some negative feedback also but that is also experience and learning then you become better and better can't you hire i like i said yesterday can't you hire a person from a local mba college as a summer trainee pay him 5000 rupees ask him to do all these things do you think it's a high investment for a month ask him to do the strategic things which you think you don't know or you don't have time to do ask him to do that involve some time say one hour or two hours in a week if you are so busy and then see you will get at least something interviewing ask him to interview few customers you don't have time to go and meet just ask him to go and meet customers get his inputs is summer training is a big uh, industry nowadays actually if you know all the companies or good companies ask for the summer trainings use them for market research meeting customers getting feedback customer satisfaction surveys and so many things getting competitors information is one thing what are what is the product line of competitor what is the price point of competitors how many products are available in the market ask them to do this survey ask them to visit the retail outlets and do that where is the problem ask him to find out competing products 
ask him to meet customer and ask, let him interview the customer on these things. You can easily do this research because market research is a source of information which will help you take better marketing decisions or better business decisions. There are other ways also like doing surveys. You can use questionnaires and get a data from a, a wide range of customers, analyze that data and then see what data points to the survey data, question data. The other methods like experimental research wherein you try to figure out the cause and effect relationships. How much advertisement should I make so that I get a desired sales? That is experimental. There are ways to do this. What is the relationship between price and sales? How, how much price should I reduce to increase sales? Should I include, reduce my price by 10% to increase sales by 15%? That is a question which you might ask. Understand the price elasticity of demand. You can do this by surveys, mostly true for consumer products. But for small businesses, interviewing and focus group discussion is a cost effective way of getting the responses from the customers and one must do it systematically. Let's try, just understand that this process look at the symptoms, look at the problems, meet customer, draw research plan, just see that your customer you choose for focus group should be some representative of your segments you want to serve. Right. It should not that any person, any people you select and do, maybe to start with you can, but it should be representative of the customers you want to sell in the future some information you can extract. So do some research before you move ahead with your investment plans or other things. But sitting and discussing all these things, making plans will take you, uh, will help you in making a better marketing decisions. Questionnaires. Questionnaires is simple. Uh, you ask questions on a piece of paper, ask a respondent to response. The questions can be of different types like this, these are the examples of the questions, this is given your paper also, you can just see. And then analyze these questionnaires, uh, not individually, but as a whole. Find out mean, medians, modes, standard deviations of these and try to understand. Psychological tools. Psychological tools are basically to understand one's mind. For example, uh, there are psychological uh, instruments like uh, MBTI. There is an inventory of uh, these scales which try to categorize the customers in different categories or try to understand the undergoing psychological processes. There are scales to measure that. For example, there are scales to measure the trust level, scales to measure emotions. How do you measure emotions? There are scales to measure. Scale, what scale? You can ask a person, just respond on a scale of 1 to 10. How happy you feel? What, what will you do if you are given this? So, if you respond on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 probably means I do not agree with this and 10 means I agree to the highest level and 5 means neutral. So I tend to make some judgment out of this. Just try to understand your emotion, the psychology, mechanical devices. Just to understand your behavior, if I put a camera here and just body, watch your body movements while I give lectures, so I might view that uh, video afterwards that after half an hour, these guys were feeling bored, you know, they are shifting places and watching like, so this is a piece of information, you are my customers, 
So I must make my lecture more interesting using this research input mechanical device for observation data. It is giving me observational data. A similar more mechanical devices for this, you know. Quantitative measures. Just find out the hard quantitative facts. Uh, survey data helps you in doing this. There are surveys, syndicated research surveys conducted by researchers like IMRB, AC Nielsen, which track the uh, market share of different companies at retailer level. They visit around 10,000 retailers in India every month and see which brand is present in what quantity. And they come up with the syndicated reports. The market share of Coke is this much, market share of Lux is this much. These are quantitative. Quantitative is when you convert in numbers. This is again survey, you can use survey for these quantitative uh, So You can use mechanical, say camera like, psychological, understanding the psyche of a customer, emotions with different scales. And these scales are developed by a lot of research. Simple questionnaires, descriptive questionnaires, what you like, what you don't like, say yes, no type of thing, or any quantitative measurements. I just have a small question regarding that. Uh, it's a, it's a, basically two questions I have. One first question is, uh, if it's a survey we're trying to do a questionnaire, would it help in having a large number of people giving an input? with a short survey or a sh long one, half an hour survey or 15 minute survey where less number of people are taken, you know, uh, which should be choose which, in which kind of scenarios? In uh, statistics, uh, you call it sampling. What should be the size of a sample? Simple uh, I can relate to is, do you know how to make rice? So how you check that rice is cooked or not? How you normally check? I'll take one or two. One or two grains out of it. So what is the number? What is the sample? Maximum two, three. Three grains out of how many grains? How much? Uh, it could be 10,000. You are sure of your sample, na? Yeah. with two grains you are sure that rice is cooked, same way. You know why? Because the variability of all the grains of rice is very low. The response or variability of responses of rice is very low. But in human beings the variability can be high. If you think it is a homogeneous set of customers few responses will do. If you think that customers are from different industries, different background, different, that, that judgment you have to make. Then you need a variety. If you think it is a homogeneous set of customers, for example, college students in IIT, college students in Mumbai, in the uh, you know, second year college students, it is a quite a homogeneous group type of thing. You know? what drink they prefer, for example, you have to know this. So probably out of uh, 10,000, even 30 responses will help you in understanding that. But if you have to understand uh, consumption of beverage across age groups, across regions, then you have to choose your sample carefully in different segments. And there is a statistical tool to do that actually. A sampling process, which probably is available in that uh, Malhotra's book of marketing research, you can use that. You can read on. Sir, whenever uh, we select a questionnaire for the research or uh, data collection, I found, uh, or I had, I did one questionnaire to study labor absenteeism and distributed amongst number of labors in the mill, but. To avoid the 
they, they have given the wrong data in that city right, regarding right. their absenteeism or their satisfactory level about the wages or incentives. Right. So this wrong data will misguide us to yeah. our study. We so call garbage in, garbage out actually. That will happen. That is the judgment of a researcher. For example, you want to understand the absenteeism in mill. What, why should you do actually questionnaire? Don't you have a record for each labor? Say punched card or whatever system you have in the factory. Why to ask labor? First point should be get the precise data which is already available to you. Just see who, where is the problem actually. Should you, should you uh, send questionnaire to everybody in the mill for absenteeism? Probably there are few problem cases, right? Now, if the problem cases are 5 to 10, then again you don't need questionnaire. You can just talk heart to heart with them. If the problem cases are in hundreds, then probably there is a problem. And then the probably there is a problem at management level. So, don't even, even no need to ask them actually. Just see where is your problem. So, I mean to say, you are absolutely right. Garbage in, garbage out. And there are political issues why people will not respond. So, you have to find out the ways to extract responses. It may not be questionnaire in some sensitive cases. If the cases are very sensitive, questionnaires don't help. They don't help. Maybe one to one talk may help. So, you have to see how sensitive is the issue, what is the time and cost available for the making analysis. So, that is very important, you know. It, question is not a remedy for all the researches and all this. You have to use these things like observation. Now, if I give you a sheet and tell me how did you find my lecture, if you say excellent, and I have the mechanical device which says you are shifting gears. So, what does questionnaire mean to me? You know, that solid data is more important to me actually. Why should I ask you how did you feel? I can judge how did you feel. So, try to be as precise as possible, as factual as possible. So, this camera will give me better picture than a questionnaire. You have to see what is more, what is better actually in this situation. For example, if I have to make assessment that how many, uh, what books should I, uh, IIT library has a big budget actually. So, how many books should I purchase this year, right? So, what is the, how should I decide? What books should I purchase? One way is I ask all the faculty members, give me a list of books. For example, they repeat the books and journals which were already there, right? So, I simply go and place orders. Now, another way is I do checking of all the existing books. How many times the faculty have actually used this book? They ordered this book last time, but they never used it. There are ways to measure that, see that. Some books are kept lying on the shelves for years and nobody uses them, although many people order them repeatedly. So, one way is to just go and see whether it was, it is some exercise. Again, the size of library, you can hire two people and check there. So, it is a tangible data rather than I spend, ask faculty, easy way, na? ask faculty what you want, place the order, get the books, everybody is happy. But you have to be more precise, make my decision based on some tangible information, I have to do some research. And then, you know, everybody will appreciate after some time. And the decision will be in the interest of not only faculty, but students and the government also who Invests, uh, invest a lot of funds in IIT. So, you have to find out the ways and means and what are the alternatives available. So, anything else? I just was having the second question. Yeah. Uh, it's about the tools. We, we have questionnaires, psychological tools, mechanical tools, pointed to measures. I was thinking about web surveys and mobile surveys. Yeah. And in this, the volume is high. Right. That's the first part of the question when I asked you. Uh, once the volume is high, we tend I, I can go towards web and mobile. But the descent page is in mobile, it has to be less than one minute. Right. People don't have more than that time in terms of attention span. Sure. 
on a web it is less than 10 minutes right they are right. like not even 10 minutes 10 minutes right. high less than 5 minutes is maximum they'll give for a survey so when when that kind of things are there and the first part is in the first 1 minute thing what i'm trying to capture uh, will be a very precise question see if it is a lengthy survey i can hide my question elaborately and finally ask about their salary or something which is very sensitive data in order to come to that point i ask them seven eight questions come to the eight, ninth question or tenth question and then they are comfortable and they kind of answer it if it is a one minute survey i have to be very precise and straight about what i am looking at because they ha- i have to communicate what i want now in that point what would you recommend you know if uh, one minute survey is what is the methodology i sh- should use to design a survey and for a five minute what is the because once the volumes are high i know my market is heterogeneous and now i'm trying to predict uh, purchasing power i want to reduce my price how much i should reduce it's a it's a very important question for me yet i cannot directly ask my people like you know how much uh, do you want to pay for it obviously they lie you know they want a lesser price yeah. they'll choose the least one even though they can afford to pay little more than that so what is the way to see uh, that depends upon your objectives basically what should be the length what should be the medium it is all guided by what is your research problem and how do you want to address right and how precisely you should ask the question now coming to the sensitive question which you ask what is the salary uh, and what sh- how much price should i reduce there are ways to tackle these actually you should never ask a person what is the salary because he will most of the times will never give the right answer in indian context research in india tried their best understanding the salaries of customers but they all failed you know finally what they did they came up with a new classification system known as sec classification socio economic classification system they started asking people what is your education qualification and what is your designation in the company you work for and then estimated what could be his salary bracket then they ask what do you own four wheeler two wheeler then they correlate the person of this designation in this company with this education owns x y z things so rather than asking salary directly ask other things which are important why you want to ask salary you want to estimate what is his purchasing power right and what will he purchase why you want to ask purchasing power because you want to estimate whether he will buy your product or not so just ask whether you have the product or not or similar product or not so don't go through a loop because you you there is every chance you will fail most of the people don't know what is the exact salary now what is salary is it the individual salary or the household salary when you want to make a durable purchase how does it it matters it's a household income which is important nowadays that is not important there is everything is available on emi so things have changed unless until most it's very important don't ask salary just try to estimate by other means so uh, yeah can you can also give a range yeah range range can also be given absolutely again see what judgment you want to make from that just ask yourself again whether i will be able to precisely make that judgment or not but there are other ways of doing that and one is salary second is uh, what you ask price if you ask customer how much should i reduce you buy he'll say give it free these surveys also fail actually i'm just saying i i just just wait just hold for a minute these surveys will also fail because customers themselves don't know best thing in this case is to ask is to give options nokia 1100 for 1500 rupees nokia 1100 for 1400 rupees nokia 1100 for 17000 rupees 17 nokia 1100 with camera at 1500 nokia 1100 with fm at 1650 this gives them options with some feature variation and then you can get slightly right answers if you ask them what should i do so because it is a value which they look for customer so give features and price 
Nokia 1100 with camera for 2000 rupees means you are giving him both cues benefits and sacrifices the value part will you prefer this or Nokia 1100 with FM loudspeaker for 2200 right now you know your costing but how much he values that FM and loudspeaker for 200 rupees then you will be able to understand that so never ask like this you know give options do not give ask how, what, what will you prefer they will, they will give free that is the best option give me for you know for a year I will tell you after usage they are standard you know in the B2B scenario with the geographically dispersed uh, customers, not, uh, not very uh, homogeneous, what is the best way to get market research if I need to know what kind of feature attributes uh, the customer would be interested in? Like you uh, say address to different company, uh, different industries uh, like automobile. A very specific example, yeah. uh, we were looking at foundries. Uh, spread all around, uh, they are not really in a particular area and what software they might be using and what features they might find most, uh, be most interested in. What would be the best way to do that? I think uh, sometimes a case study is a better way, you know. Just pick up a representative found, just find out what can be a type of foundries, like we say how you segment a foundries actually either on the basis of the technology, basis of the metal they use, basis of the supplier they have, some way of categorizing foundries. Now, there will be some category of foundry who may need properly your software. This is just thinking. You can probably pick up a single or two representative foundries and work hand in hand with them actually as a case study. Case study is also a very important part of research. Where, where you have such a heterogeneous and you are not able to sell, just few, pick up few, for, first settle with them and then move on. If you try to attempt everything, that, you, that is the problem actually. That is why I say market segmentation. For example, variable you have to choose. For example, see geographical heterogeneity is, does not mean anything nowadays. Heterogeneity of purchase behavior is more challenging rather than geographical heterogeneity. Ge geographical heterogeneity you can easily manage by traveling, low cost traveling I will say. But challenge comes in the needs and wants of that heterogeneity is more challenging actually. Just try to group in those categories. Geographical I think you can easily manage by traveling. You have to put some resource in traveling and understanding that is less challenging. The reason I asked is because sometime back we tried it with a survey. Unfortunately, that didn't work because uh, you have in an industrial scenario, you have more than one person making a decision. And uh, most people do not really have the time to give to a, right. a guy doing the research. So whenever a guy would come, they would probably... Survey will not work in this case. Never work. They have never worked in this case. Survey will not work. Survey is only to, for consumer industry. No, it, it works for uh, industrial goods also. but for very specific ranges it will not work in this case it will not work properly because there are more than one decision makers and in different foundries and different companies the dynamics is different somewhere the user is very powerful somewhere the purchaser is very powerful somewhere the consultant is very powerful somewhere the owner is powerful so everything says we will buy this but we say no no I don't have money I will buy this so what will you do so that case study thing case study is also a very important part so you have to categorize segment on basis of certain variable which you think is important. Maybe the industry they are serving, serving to, foundries they are supplying to. For example, they are supplying to Tata Motors, the engine blocks. I am just saying. So their requirements must be more stringent than any other roadside foundry type of thing. So you have to see which type of foundry you want to target. So there you have to segment that foundries on certain variable which is not geography, which is not simple variable, which is on some different variable. Maybe metal they are using, maybe uh, the supplier they are supplying to, maybe the turnover only, sales turnover, maybe uh, their automation levels, I do not know. You have to find out. I can't, it is very difficult to say here. Let us see which variable is more important 
which explains the purchase behavior. You can pick up few case studies actually. Just rather than running around, just pick up one or two foundries. Just try to understand everything. So uh, I want to know that uh, what are the various ways, tools, yeah, and methods to decide how much should I spend on marketing, advertising to get the desired uh, yeah. revenues. Yeah. There was a case, uh, one of my friends, uh, he launched a website known as homeview.in mm -hmm. three and a half years back. It was an online DVD rental service. Okay. So it, perform it performed well, it was a new idea. And uh, after one and a half years, Reliance <laughs> approached them to uh, take over the website. Okay. So, in any case, due to management issues and stuff, they don't uh, agree to it. So, after that, what Reliance did was, it uh, Reliance launched its own online DVD rentals, bigflix.com, uh, .in. So, and uh, it was a success. Uh, at present, it is a success. But uh, homeview.in has to uh, shut shop due to uh, their budget constraints. <laughs> They don't have that much uh, money to spend on advertising as Reliance did. So what are, what are the basic, uh, I mean, in this scenario, what could have Homeview had done to overcome the issues in those budget constraints? See, there are two things here. One is uh, competing with a giant. And can you, compete, can you match the expenditures he is doing? But uh, they've got one and a half years of experience yeah, more yeah. than Reliance. Yeah. So this is, so this is one thing. Second thing is standalone question: How much you should spend? So, uh, 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 first question is, if compared to a big giant, huh? so answer to second is obvious. You cannot because the gestation period, the type of investment they can do, they can make, and they can sustain with losses for some time. A small business cannot. So comparison cannot be done. So that is why you know companies like Parley thought of exiting the cola market when Coca-Cola came. Same case actually, maybe the levels are different, but they thought of exiting the market. So, what could have been the solutions? I mean, they were there in the market one and a half years before uh, Reliance. Yeah. So, what could have, uh, uh, what could have they done uh, in this one and a half years to market themselves more efficiently? Yeah, this is third thing. Let us address first question. How much you should spend? For a new business, you know, the benchmark is how much customer you want to attract. There are interestingly some models available which can guide you actually. For example, you want to attract, so what is your objective I mean to say? See, you have to have some objective. You can't say I will attract everybody. You have to choose some segment and say I want to attract 10,000 customers in next quarter. Something like this. Now to attract 10,000 customers, what should I do? Just it's a paperwork, you know. I can now. One thing is how much money I need to attract ten thousand questions. Second, that is one. Second question is how much I can take from the market. There's some upper cap, some lower cap. For example, lower cap is how much I can. I should do. One is I, what I should do. Second is how much I can get. So you have to settle somewhere in between. So there's a model. You can again choose. What is the best media to get in touch with the customer? Say the media is Miller. There can be many, the media can be the advertisement also. Media can be the mailer also. Media can be email also. Media can be SMS also. Now with, for a small business you have to see which is the cost effective media and more efficient media. Say a paper mailer you think is the Paper insertion in a newspaper is the most effective way or cost effective way. Then the things become clear. For example, the cost of a mailer. So for attracting 10,000 customers, how much mailer you need to send? Say you need to send 40,000 mail mailers. For each 40,000 insertions. So for 40,000 insertions, how much cost? Cost of producing, cost of inserting and circulating. You can estimate the budget. Well, first thing you must try to estimate what I need to target. Then there will be some budget. Then you can see whether I can work it or no. No, I cannot. 
So let me reduce. See, this is objective. I am not saying what will happen after that. You can say, okay, let me target 5,000 customer only. So I need to send not 50,000, but 15,000 mailers. Now your budget will reduce. So now you consciously know that this thing will happen. You can, you can otherwise use some low cost media to promote. For example, you can, for the word of mouth will spread that ultimately you may get more than 10,000 customers, but you have to set some target and then see which is the cost effective medium and then based on that budget. So starting point is how much customer you want to attract. For example, you want to attract 5,000 customers, you need to target 50,000 customers. If you need to target 50,000 customers, then because the response rate will never be 100%, it will be some percent of what you do. So this is way, so there are in big organized industries, sometimes you do this much only. This, was, this is one way. I need to attract this segment and these many customers. So I need to advertise through TV channels. Every TV channel has a TRP, program has a TRP rating. TRP rating means this many customers watch that program. So I can estimate that this program is being watched by this many customers. So I am able to air my product to these many customers. Assumption is they watch this program, they watch the ad also. Assumption, you cannot do anything. They might switch during that time. So this TV program is being watched by these many customers. So this is my target. So for example, TRP rating of SaaS Bikabi Bahuthi is this, you know. So you understand there is a data to support that these many customers watch. So you know that this program, this ad will be watched by this many customers. Now discount it. 50% will not watch the ad. So how many? 50,000. Now again, so this is how you target. Now then given the TRP rating, there is some ad budget. So how many times you should show the ad in that program? One, two, three. That you can also decide and the, you build on basically. Should you air the ad on other channels same time? So that is you build your budget depending upon your targeting of customers. This is one way. Second way is you have certain benchmarks. For example, your last product was marketed with this budget and it was successful. And that budget was placed in these mediums. So you try to replicate that. Third, third can be, third benchmark is for a year, whatever positive cash flow I will get, I will reinvest. I will build on. So these are the few benchmarks which are normally built over. Target customer and my ability to pay. Somewhere in between. Uh, there is a term marketing plan which will be for the next session. We have to do some work on that. What would comprise of marketing plan? Have they given some template for that? Uh, there is a template actually for marketing okay, okay. plan. They should give. Right, there is a structure. So we should go by that. Way. Yes. But uh, in reality, when we make a marketing plan, what should it all contain? I think the template they might have given includes everything, you know. Yeah, <coughs> might we start with executive summary and objectives yeah. and plan and okay, all that. It's the points are like product, process, services, 10 points, target group, 10 points, price, 10 points, market plan. It's again 10 points. So. So if that happens in the session, then we may not be able to. No, they should be able to give you some market. structure actually. That's the way in which we have to present the data. Yeah. yeah. That's the way in which so, we have to present the data. For market plan, there is no structure. Here. No structure given? No structure. There should be a structure. In fact, uh, I have a template similar, but I need some time. When do you have to submit this? By 3.45. Oh. Uh, but at least what would, uh, say, leaving aside the exercise. OK, OK. If the basic structure is you start with objectives. What is the objective? For example, objective can be I want to sell to X numbers, X numbers or I want X revenue, some objective. See, then see I want to, see for existing product you objective may be to grow by 15%. For a new product, the objective can be to capture 1% market share, existing market share. For extremely new product, the objective can be uh, acquiring 5,000 customers. So, any uh, objective. So, the based on objective, then the simple way of marketing plan is STP and 4 P's. Segmentation, targeting, positioning and 4 P's. Price, product, product, price, promotion 
and place. In product, you have to see how much, how many product variants you <coughs> want to come up. Pouches, 100 grams, 200 grams, 500 grams type of thing. Price, for each variant, what is, should be the price point? 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 15 rupees, 4 rupees, 99 paisa type of thing. What are the dis for now price at all levels at discount for example it is a consumer product price at distributor level price at retailer level price at consumer level so what discount you will give at each level 5% to distributor 25% to retailer and MRP to distributor this much is VAT so this work out if it is B2B product then what what should be the list price and what should be the admissible discount and what is the break even point you should know for uh, price, this is price. Promotion, what medium of promotion you want to do? Advertisement, then within advertisement, media advertisement, print advertisement, web advertisement. Second is publicity, which type of publicity? Advertorials, publicity, road shows. Three, sales force, what sales force? I have given that slide of four P's now, just find out the things. Uh, sales force, what sales force? Be, uh, how much to spend? No, five sales people. Just think, which is feasible? That will depend on what territory you want to cover. Some uh, benchmarks. Then sales force. Then fourth is sales promotion. Do you want to launch a free gift scheme, free uh, product uh, usage scheme? Yeah, something. You know, when you launch a new toothpaste, you distribute free. Just to enhance the usage. Just to for consumer to test their product. So do you want any sales promotion budget to start with or test marketing budget? So this is what. Then come the place. What channel? Alternate channels, retailer, distributor, wholesaler or direct or whatever channel. So these things will form the marketing plan. STP and 4P, simple, simply saying. There are many things, but simply saying you should be clear of all these things. Or in, in promotion, you can keep some budget for market research also. You know, market research budget normally is very small. If you see these organized industries, companies like ITC, Hindustan Labor, PNG, they have separate market research uh, departments, and their budget is less than uh, one percent, less than 0.5 percent actually. But the benefit is very huge. It builds up over the period of time actually. So this is one. So. You should know what is the production cost, what is the break-even point. So that will help you in deciding what should be the price, what should be the profit margin, and what should be the other cost. STP 4 Ps, break-even point, and other things basically. The trick is in understanding market, target market, and segments. That will make your thinking more clear. So anything else, we will close down for the team.